Gemini, how are you? So good to be back. Um, just wanted to give you a little information so you can um, be aware of some changes that I've made to the channel. I did take a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I announced that, but a lot of people missed it. I did take a little bit of a hiatus, one to refresh after two years straight of nonstop um, activity here, and then also to sort of refresh the channel and determine the direction I wanted to take it. So I did a ton of research and as well as some soul searching. So you'll notice a few changes. The first is the addition of chapters. And all that is is that I've put timestamps in the description box and the chapter breaks will show up in the play bar. So you can skip from the intro to the oracle to the tarot and, and sort of choose your own adventure. That's particularly helpful for newcomers. So if you're brand new to the channel, welcome. If you feel like just skipping ahead to the tarot, you can now get to that pretty super quick. Um, and then get a flavor for my energy and the style of my reading. So I hope that that helps. Um, this is also uh, an opportunity for some of you who like to do the Oracle last. Have had a lot of feedback about that. So like I said, um, take the readings as they feel most comfortable for you. The intro usually will have some reference to um, astrology. For example, we're in the energy of Lion's Gate. The portal is at its peak of opening on 8-8. Uh, which is also the new moon in Leo. So you will often hear me talk about the astrology in the introduction piece. So that's just, so for those of you who are interested in that, that's what you can expect there. Second, you'll notice an intentional focus on divine feminine energy. The research I did de uh, uh, yielded that there's about 90% of the channel is identifying as divine feminine, meaning 90% of you watching. And so um, I figured if I just sort of tailor all the readings to that perspective, it may help eliminate a lot of confusion. That does in no way, shape or form leave out divine masculine. We can't have a twin flame reading without them. I'm just trying to say that to make it easier for the viewer, the perspective of the reading will be from that perspective. Obviously energies come through reversed all the time. So as always, let it speak to you the way it resonates with your particular storyline. Um, and I'm hoping that it reduces confusion. You'll also see some additional Divine Feminine for the collective readings. Uh, those will be more in depth around a question. So keep your questions coming in the, in the comments. That way I can build up um, a, little, a little notebook of topics to do the readings around for the collective, and then I can cover all the Zodiac that way. Finally, you'll notice a less is more approach. And all that means is I'm not just gonna be here pumping out readings. You know, there are plenty of people here on YouTube that do that. That's not the best use of my gifts. And so I'll be going through the one trip around the Zodiac per month. Um, always the new moon and the full moon readings, any other special astrological events, such as Lion's Gate, for example, um, as well as Divine Feminine Collective readings. That's what you'll see here. So now we move on to the oracle portion that wraps up the introduction um what i've done here gemini is i have intuitively selective three selected three different decks for you i've got the enchanted map the shaman's dream and the sacred force oracle i pre-shuffled and pre-drew your cards so what came through for you here is making a choice in reverse from the enchanted map and what this is telling you gemini is there you know there's a need there's a need for you to reclaim your power in the choice that you have to make. Upright, this is the lover's card, which is your card in tarot. In reverse, it's saying you cannot abdicate your responsibility. The choice is yours to make, so reclaim your power in the making of a very important choice that you are being confronted with. The next card from um, Shaman's Dream is card 14, which is the drifter, and it says, experiencing life as it comes. And you see this sort of sailboat just kind of unmoored. What this is saying is it's time to cut the mooring lines from the dock and let yourself drift wherever the universe um, uh, is trying to guide you. So once you make the choice that you're going to make, right, because we need to do that, you may be unsure of how that's, you know, what that's going to look like on the other side. This is saying you don't need to be sure. There's no map for where you're headed here, Gemini. Like, go follow the lazy river. That came out for someone else. I want to say Aries. And let it take you where you are um, 
where, where it's determined, where you're destined. That was the word I was looking for, where you're destined to go. And the last card out is from Sacred Forest, card 29, two and nine is 11, hello, Phoenix Transmutation. So what's, what's gonna happen here, Gemini, is when you come out on the other side, you will be a decidedly different person. You will not be the same person that comes out of this lazy river float along as you were when you went in and made the choice to what? Surrender. So there's a lot of surrender here. Um, the drifter's card to me is, um, the drifter is a surrender card, is sort of the letting go of the need to control where you're headed. The phoenix is when you get there, you will be an entirely different person, transformed obviously for the better, rising up from the ashes as the phoenix does. This is the judgment card to me. It is, an, it is a crossroads, it is second chances. Um, and it's answering the call of, of the divine to your higher gifts and to where you're supposed to be on this journey. So make your choice, surrender, and prepare to be transmuted and amazed. I love the way the oracle came out for you. Um, the drifter card, by the way, is card 14, one and four is five, which is about change. And sometimes when we let go and we surrender, we're in this sort of state of flux where nothing uh, is familiar. Everything feels um, like we're in a fun house, you know, with the moving floor and the and the and the and the crazy mirrors, and we, you know, we don't really know what's real from what's imagined. So um, yeah, it may be a little topsy turvy for a little bit, especially through this massive energy portal of Lion's Gate. But when you come out on the other side, um, it's going to be a beautiful thing. You'll be stronger, stronger, more self-assured, more confident than ever before. So, whew, lovely oracle. We'll see if it shows up in your reading. Here we go for the tarot portion of the program, Gemini. Let's see what's coming through your reading. You will notice that all these readings are going to be a bit longer because I'm going deeper. So maybe not as many readings, but they will hopefully be of more value to you, provide deeper insights and more information for you to work with. What am I telling you? You're gonna come out on the other side, brand new beginning, because the Phoenix is all about, right? You gotta burn down, the break, you gotta break through, no, you gotta break down a breakthrough. <laughs> break down a breakthrough. So we're looking at the Ace of Pentacles, a new beginning here. And here's what's crossing you, the need to let go. Make the final choice and then surrender and let go. Wow. Offloading some very heavy negative karma, maybe something that's been weighing on your shoulders for quite a while here, Gemini. But it's beautiful because that new beginning is here for you. Underneath, five of swords. That, some, that could be some reference to sabotage of self or maybe an outside source moving to calmer waters perfect now this is in the past position so i feel you almost set your mind to like i gotta get beyond this drama um in the past what's crowning you queen of swords perfect for you gemini yeah um check your emotions at the door this is an energy of it's a little dispassionate she does have um cups energy all the queens do so there is enough compassion here but i feel like what you're going to be doing what's what's um operating for you in terms of your strength is your ability to be discerning, to cut the wheat from the chaff, to um, see things as they are and not how you'd like to be and the way just like them to be. But also here, Queen of Swords is also about asking questions. And you know, like going one layer deep and then one layer deeper still. So I do feel the Queen of Swords energy is you. Future position, Two of Wands, choosing the path that takes you to this new beginning. We have, aha, uh -huh, there's some advice for spirit, seven of swords, energy surrounding you, knight of wands, hopes and fears is the strength card and the potential outcome. There it is. Ace of swords, epiphany, an aha moment, a big truth, a big reality, a divine gift of knowledge or insight. Wow. So it looks to me like the energy surrounding you is somebody may be, you know, somebody may come in and out. Um, and as a result, they may not have a lot of staying power. This does seem like it's an offer of passion. It's excitement and adventure, which always 
um, gets your attention, Gemini, but there's an issue around it. And here your hope and or fear, the strength card, do you have the strength to overcome the obstacles here? I'm seeing the obstacles in the 10 of pentacles. You've been carrying it for a long time. You've been trying to move beyond it, but some something or someone keeps pulling you back. Um, and keep setting you up for what you perceive what you perceive to be failure. So you're going to choose a new path. And I feel like that's perfectly, this is exactly what your oracle was telling you to do. First, make the choice and then let go and let everything else take over. The advice from spirit here is around the seven of swords. I will look at that. That can just be like, you know, get out of Dodge, escape this situation that isn't serving you. It can also be some form of deception or a perception of deception or betrayal that you're uh, being called to be aware of, right? Like, who can you trust? Who can you not? And can you trust yourself? So that's an interesting card. We'll clarify. And then the outcome position is perfect. All the insight, all the downloads, this feels very um, connected to lion's gate in terms of all the thought 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 that's coming in for you um it may feel a little fire hose ish to you with all the downloads coming in that's okay just um every now and then i was just telling someone in the comments sometimes you just gotta turn your head to the side and you know catch your breath so that you don't get overwhelmed by all the energy coming towards you That's why the Queen of Swords is your friend. Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. Wow. So um, you're, you're heading into a whole new cycle of stability, excitement, passion, commitment. Yeah, and you're going to leap right into it. You're going to go all in on this new path, this new opportunity. Underneath is the Four of Cups. The way that I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing here is don't miss the opportunity uh, this is a potential missed opportunity so i've got like <laughs> there it is <laughs> laura and her hair problems um the four of cups to me because it's underneath um it's coming from the bottom of the deck it's what's kind of roaming around in your psyche and it's also clarifying the fool which means that on some level you're afraid you're, you've kind of got some fear of missing an opportunity. So you're gonna see this new opportunity present itself and it's gonna be super exciting and attractive. And then you're gonna maybe go, oh, like this leap of faith really scares me, but you're gonna do it anyway so that you don't miss the opportunity. Wow. And 10 of wands here, what's crossing you? Um, I feel like the, the, the crossing card can either be what's interfering, what may block, the uh, path for you or what is assisting. This is kind of coming through both ways because the 10 of wands is telling you there's something weighing you down that you need to offload. And then the other potential is that you're ready to offload it. So let's look. Fear, king of cups, the one you love. And there's the strength card again. Leo energy coming in here for some of you that may be important. We've got Sag, we've got Pisces, Aquarius. Yeah. <clears throat> and the King of Cups can be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. So I'll just say that. But here's the thing. I feel you may have insecurity about this person that you love, this King of Cups. Um, and when I say insecurity, meaning as if this person doesn't really give up much, they don't really share much of how they feel because they struggle with that. The King of Cups always comes from a good place, but doesn't always have the words to have the other feel comfortable. And I, I almost feel as if this has been a long-term problem, something that it's time to offload because it's weighing you down here. Your fears, your insecurities being triggered by somebody that you love, um, but that doesn't always find the right words to help you feel safe in the in the connection. And here you are gathering up your strength, your courage and your confidence to overcome the obstacle. So the 10 of wands is an is an obstacle in the sense that um, you're weighed down by the fear of it all, the insecurities that this person triggers in you by virtue of the fact that they don't always come come forward with their feelings as easily as you do. And the five of swords underneath What's below is so, sort of the subconscious realm. Page of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, 
Four of Wands. Oi. All right. So on some level, I feel like there's something new here to be learned. It's like there's fresh energy coming in with the Page of Pentacles on top of the Five of Swords. It's time to take that first step. Stop setting your own self up for failure here and stop opening yourself up to sabotage. So it can be sabotage coming in from someone else, gaslighting, gossip, somebody, you know, who always has to be right and kind of, you know, leaves you... Uh, in that energy of it's a zero sum game. There's only going to be one winner or we're all going to die. And it's like, that's the five of swords. It's not fun. So I feel as if this page of swords is that one step forward to kind of begin fresh, take your time. I like that the, the um, Knight of Pentacles clarifies the page of Pentacles, which means you're not, you're going to go into this new direction. Remember I said, you're drifting, you're drifting, you're on the lazy river and you're waiting for that transmutation. You don't know where this is taking you. So begin with the first step, the journey of a thousand miles away from sabotage um, begins with a single step and oh, by the way, take it slow. Ain't nobody in a rush. So the, the Knight of Pentacles is moving slowly, deliberately with intention. And underneath, underneath the underneath is this Four of Wands. So we're talking about a twin flame connection. And if you want a different result, if you want to experience something different, Gemini, then always feel feeling like it's a zero-sum game and the deck is stacked against you, then you're going to have to try a new way of being in the world. And I think that's what your oracle was saying. So if you didn't watch that, go back and watch it. Six of Swords in the past, moving away from this Five of Swords, moving away from the drama, moving away from the sabotage. Definitely for some, yes. I feel like you embarked on a solitary journey, two of, and the three. So, hmm. yeah, I feel like you just retreated the way that you got away was to just to go within and that meant you left some wiggle room, you left things up in the air, um, buying yourself some time with this card and three of wands underneath, really trying to call in um, with the three of wands. The three of wands is like your ship's coming in. I feel like you were calling in what it is you've been waiting for, but this is about making it happen. So with it under the deck and with the two of pentacles with things up in the air, sort of suggests that your manifestation powers were kaput. So now we've got the queen of swords. Like it's, in other words, you couldn't draw to yourself that which you desired because you left things too wide open and you retreated entirely. So, okay, you know, um, you probably needed that distance to put time and space between you and this person. Queen of Swords, Two of Swords, Queen of Swords again, can you even believe it? And the Three of Pentacles underneath. So you're hoping for a, a team effort here. Some, I'm just gonna say cooperation is what I feel like you're looking for cooperation from this King of Cups. Uh, I do feel you have questions and I do feel like you're, you know, we're doubling down on the Queen of Swords with the Two of Swords in the middle, which means that the answers are within. You can ask all the questions you want in the world. That's what this was saying. You know, nobody else can kind of, um, you know, make the decision for you. You have to do the work, um, not making a choice in reverse. You have to do the work to reclaim your power. So here's the Queen of Swords. There's some power there. And the way that the Queen of Swords operates is truth seeker, truth teller. So there's an open and honest channel of communication with her hand extended coming from her heart, compassion, sincerity, and in the middle, we and good intentions, of course, we've got that Two of Swords, which is, and I'm taking in every single word, and I'm gonna be really kind of pulling back and um, spending some time in solitude, reflecting on the decision I have to make and how best to proceed. So I do feel like the Queen of Swords is a strength for you. It's We're doubling down on it here in the clarifiers, but it's the Two of Swords that's the real kicker because that's where the decision-making sausage is made. All right, and then future, Two of Wands. The paths will be before you, and with the world of possibilities in the palm of your hand, all you got to decide is what you want. What do I want? What? And move in that direction, Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment. 
Let me do a little more shuffling that just kind of slipped out. What do you want? Yep. What do you want? Well, there you are. Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands knows who she is and what she wants and how to go about getting it. And she's got that little black cat working some magic for her. Ten of Cups is what you're after. Choose the path that moves in that direction of the happily ever after and the wish fulfillment, the emotional contentment. So the Nine of Wands will transmute. We'll transmute to the Ten of Wands the minute you determine, I know who I am, I stand in my power, and I know what I want. I've got all the information now, Gemini, all the information. I've done all the research. I'm tabulating all the data, and now I know what I want, and I get to move in that direction. So really beautiful, powerful, uh, moving away from sabotage and things that don't make you feel safe offloading your triggers, your fears, gathering up your strength, your courage. You've already done the inner work and now it's time to get down to brass tacks of, um, you know, calling it as you see it and making your decisions and choices along the way. Seven of Swords, your message from spirit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... I feel like you already know what the answer is. The seven of swords with the eight of wands is saying, yeah, you gotta have a conversation about the elephant in the room. Um, the seven of swords doesn't have to be anything totally dreadful, um, but on some level, this high priestess is saying, you already know what I'm telling, why I'm telling you this, that there's some perception of betrayal or deception, or maybe somebody who um, is very self-serving and tries to get their own needs met. You know, the kind of energy that would rather ask forgiveness than permission. I know I shouldn't be doing a thing, but I'm going to do the thing anyway, and then I'm going to apologize to you for it later. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And underneath is the King of Pentacles. So this is someone in 3D that you kind of thought had your back, but I'm looking at a five of swords. In that case, they don't have your back. I'm looking at, you know, your fear and triggering around the king of cups, which means on some lo level with the 10 of wands, there's something you need to offload. And maybe it's just, you know, someone that kind of tries to work a system to game the system to get their way. And it feels like it may be coming from somebody you thought or expected would have your back, king of pentacles. So I do feel like that's the message coming through. It's telling you it's time to communicate. I'm seeing communication with the Queen of Swords. But what I like about the Queen of Swords is she removes the emotion from it. She checks it at the door. She just stays focused on, you know, just the facts, ma'am. Let's talk it through. You know, I, I want to be understood, but I also want to understand you. That's the topic you're, of the convo, though. <clears throat> and go by your intuition because there may be something hidden as well. Knight of Wands, the energy surrounding you is the Knight of Wands. Ace of Swords, my gosh, this reading. Oh, Page of Cups and the Sun. Gemini, it's so beautiful. More Leo energy coming through. For those of you dealing with a Leo, they're here three times now. So I feel um, that the energy that's surrounding you is a truth is coming out around this Knight of Wands energy. And it's an energy, it could be your, your King of Cups person. The King of Cups and the King of Pentacles to me is the same person, all right? It's just the different ways that they're appearing in the reading energetically. Here we have the Knight of Wands, same thing, in and out, in and out, in and out. I come in for what I want, Seven of, wa seven of Swords, I'm sorry, and I take it. And then I go right out the back door. That's what I'm looking at. And you're going to see that crystal clearly for what it truly is. And then right behind it is this message of love or apology. And I almost feel as the energy that's coming in is a truth bomb about to come in. And this person or you calling this person out and them coming in and being, you know, you're right. You're right. It is a, the, the Page of Cups is super sincere. So you know if this person often offers you that message of love or apology, it will be sincere. You can take it to the bank and there's the happiness underneath. So I do feel like this message of love or apology is owed to you. And I almost feel as if the, you know, when this person, this energy surrounding you is the in and out, in and out, and the clarity that you get from it. And then with that laser focus, and that sharp edge of your sword, you identify it. 
You name it right there in that moment. And I really feel like that's what the Two of Swords is about is, you know, uh, how am I going to proceed and approach this? And you're going to find it. And then they're going to be like, oh, snap, busted. And and come clean about it. The most important part of this uh, is the is the Page of Cups, is the sincerity of the apology. Strength card. Your hopes or fears. <laughs> okay. Oh. You never really have trouble speaking truth to power here, Gemini, but I feel on some level um, you're hoping you're hoping you'll have the strength. You're, you're kind of searching for the confidence. Right here in this part of the reading, it was underneath. So definitely in the subconscious realm, like I know I'm not feeling confident to, to confront this issue right now. Here it is. Your, your hope is now um, when the time comes, um, will I be able to speak truth to power? Really wanting to clear the air. Four of swords, finally heal it once or for once and for all. And underneath is the seven of wands, meeting up with any resistance. That's potentially your fear. So I feel like hope and fear is both coming through in this part of the reading. Um, your hope that you will, you know, be strong and brave and be able to speak truth to power so you can finally close it out and heal from it. And then maybe a little bit of fear that you may get some pushback or blowback from that. Oh, well, um, no risk, no reward, no grit, no pearl, Gemini. Ace of Swords is your outcome, potential outcome. Damn. I love it. Yes. Boom. Ten of Pentacles. Oof. Star, wish granted, commitment. I'm seeing um, an up-leveling of this connection. We started with the Ace of Pentacles. Um, I didn't say it at the very beginning because it was the first card out, but that can often be an offer of commitment. It's often referred to in tarot as the engagement ring card. That's kind of old fashioned, but it represents a beginning of life partnership and an up-leveling of a connection. And then I see that because you confront this head on and because you remove the emotion from it, oh my gosh, do you feel like how fast I'm talking? Oh my, gosh. my sister's a Gemini and I just channeled her in this moment. She talks like at the speed of light and I feel like you confront it and you name it. And this person is like, oh my gosh, like you nailed it. And I'm sorry. And that's not how I want to be. I, I, that's not the person I, that's not my intention. And yeah, it took you a lot to gather up your strength and your courage and your confidence to even speak the truth to power much less hold the mirror up for this person to see exactly how it, it's being experienced by you. And then the aha moment, the epiphany, my wish can be granted. This is love, commitment, marriage in that, in the, well, the, it's commitment and potential marriage in the Hierophant. The love is within your heart already. The Ten of Pentacles represents the, you know, the life partnership, legacy, everything you work so hard to build in your life. And we have the star in the middle, bringing, bringing it all into reality. So the, the future looks bright, Gemini. The future looks bright. And it's all because... When, that, when those downloads drop in that I was talking about here, where you kind of, you make the decision that the choice is yours to make. So you reclaim your power. You don't, ab, you know, abdicate responsibility. The drifter, then you surrender. You float on the lazy river. You lay, let fate and destiny take you where you're meant to be. Phoenix, you transmute energies and you come out with this crystal clear, almost laser beam of insight and clarity about the prospects of your future in this connection. And it's a dream come true. So I feel as if, um, you know, you're moving in a really intense and positive direction that requires some letting go, but that in the end, what you come through with uh, on the other side is going to be almost unrecognizable to you in a good way. All right, Gemini, if this is speaking to you, the extended is all about the divine masculine. We're going to look at what the divine masculine, how they see this situation and feel about it, how they see and feel about you will get, um, that'll be a thorough reading in and of itself. 
We'll get another message to you from spirit about that information that comes in. We'll close out with more oracles. So it's almost as big of a reading as this one on the other side. The link to that is below. Hope to see you there. Otherwise, Gemini, all the best to you during Lionsgate and New Moon in Leo. Sending so much love and gratitude. Um, see you over there. Bye.